Hello, my name is David Charles, and I'm the CTO of Kobe.io, a SaaS monitoring solution. Very. Uh, the monitoring of IT infrastructures has always struggled to keep pace with the ever-changing nature and complexity of the infrastructures themselves. I mean, IT itself is constantly evolving. Not only have we gone from mainframes to mini computers and desktops, servers in data centers, overlaid with visualization and more recently containerization, <clears throat> but some or all of those things still exist in many organizations. Application architecture has evolved from monolithic applications to client server to three tier to service oriented and to microservice architectures. Likewise, some or all of those things exist today in many organizations. So deploying the systems that assure the proper operation of any computer system by its very nature is a game of catch up. I started out as a developer on the UK's air defence system. Uh, that was a vast collection of integrated, bespoke, multi-vendor systems, all scattered across dozens of sites and accepting data feeds from all sorts of sources. Sources that included static and mobile, ground-based installations, um, radars, ships, aircraft and satellites. The UK Defence System was basically the post-war computerised version of RAF operators pushing around cardboard planes and ships um, with snooker cues on a giant map like you'd see in a World War II film. Systems like the one I worked on were the inspiration for Whopper in the 1983 or three film War Games. Except that the one I worked on never gained consciousness and as far as I recall uh, you couldn't also dial into it from a home computer uh, using an acoustic coupler on a domestic phone line. In my experience there was very little monitoring uh, the operators would use the operating system tools that were available to them uh, to observe the systems running but relied largely on reacting to issues reported by the users. Also in those days, uh, working with relatively simple architectures uh, using mainframes and dumb terminals, a bunch of chaps in dust coats would walk around the shiny kit in a room we used to call the bureau and that's sort of a data centre kids but much smaller. Uh, and press test buttons, check lights, and run the odd command using line printer, uh, using a line printer, or that's a computer that was more like a printer to check that all was well. Um, there was also testing, lots of testing, lots of manual testing. Uh, teams of analysts would compile pages upon pages of elaborate tabulated test plans that were laboriously executed over many days and weeks. So during that time, many forests were laid to waste. In general, monitoring was mainly for devices. Uh, monolithic applications of the day were considered to be either running or not running and didn't benefit from much monitoring. Um, early device monitoring was definitely siloed. Uh, single channel monitoring for devices, actual pieces of equipment. Uh, later, um, vendors would provide solutions that worked across their entire offering, all, all of their applications, using their own standard interfaces. Um, very soon it became obvious uh, that a vendor agnostic approach would be preferable because customers wanted choice and would have solutions from multiple vendors. Uh, a standards approach was adopted with the first and little remembered SGMP, which stands for Simple Gateway Monitoring Protocol, standard being evolved. And then in the mid to late 1980s, SNMP arrived. SNMP is the Simple Network Management Protocol and was defined in order to normalize the way in which we gather the status of stuff. Um, a standard protocol for collecting and organizing information about managed devices on IP networks and for modifying that information to change device behavior. Uh, the thinking was that if everything conformed to the simple standard then monitoring of devices would be trivialized. And to be fair uh, SNMP made a big difference but the trouble is the trouble is this stuff was designed by a committee. Uh, 
um, to maintain compatibility when adding capability, newer versions of the standard were introduced. So SNMP versions run from V1 to V2C and V3. So SNMP V1 was indeed a simple, uh, simple standard. Um, it operated over protocols like the User Datagram Protocol, UDP. V1, however, was criticised for its poor security, but the standard was approved based on a belief that it was an intra protocol desperately needed while moving towards large-scale deployment of the internet and its commercialisation. The first version of SNMP v2 wasn't widely accepted due to a controversial security model. In actual fact, the C in v2c refers to the simpler, community-based scheme employed in that version, but was more widely adopted. Finally came v3, and while that made no changes to the protocol, um, it did add uh, a usable cryptographic security model. So all versions are still in use widely today, and while many organisations aspire to adopting v3, it can be hard to administer, and in the case of embedded SNMP supported network devices, there is still a lot of legacy kit around, with only rudimentary support for v1. The SNMP protocol supports polling devices for information and setting device configuration uh, with calls like GET and SET. SNMP managers would invoke these calls on SNMP managed devices, gathering metrics to store and display. The SNMP standard also supports asynchronous notification called TRAPS, uh, a mechanism to send a message to a management station to notify it of a significant event, like the interface on a router going down or coming back up, or a uh, heartbeat to indicate a uh, device's aliveness. So typical monitoring solutions would perform a combination of SNMP polling to get information about a managed device in the infrastructure, and also be available to receive and process SNMP traps. They would collect, store and display performance related data obtained through polling and receive, process and display events from sources sending traps. This would enable network operations staff to watch the infrastructure for anomalies. In short, no, it got complicated. Well, it got more complicated. Applications by now uh, were getting more distributed, tiered and complex. Uh, this in turn proliferated network traffic and increased demands on hosting those applications and services. While some vendors developed monitoring technology that would expose performance and availability of applications and services using the SNMP standards, uh, other vendors felt that the device-based approach to monitoring over was overcomplicated um, and inappropriate. Um, although SNMP supported the notion of a management information base, these are basically structures making it standard and the way things are monitored infinitely extensible. In practice, modelling an application or service in this way was onerous. So while it was still important, at least from a marketing perspective, to support SNMP, other non-standard mechanisms were explored. You could argue then that around this time, uh, in, in IT operations management solutions, they distilled into the performance and availability management silos of infrastructure, network and application. So infrastructure monitoring solutions tend to be general purpose and focus on the general state of the IT infrastructure, including network devices and servers. You'll still find lots of SNMP in use, um, but less so for server in infrastructure these days, especially with the onset of wide-scale virtualization. Uh, due to the demands of IT on the network vendors, introduced, the network vendors introduced uh, network performance management products. Uh, they supported network packet analysis, which enabled the systems to service rel surface relevant information about performance and behaviours on the network. And with the proliferation of web-based technologies and new application design approaches, it became more important to see how services were responding and more importantly, what was going on inside application servers. So the application performance monitoring class of solutions employ deep dive approaches to getting information out of instrumented applications 
and even the application runtimes themselves. So in the, in the 90s and early 2000s, things proliferated, especially due to virtualization and other technologies. We got to the stage where organizations, some with enormous infrastructures, I mean, we're talking 30, 50, 100,000 servers, were faced with an unsustainable monitoring challenge. Many organizations found themselves facing a sea of metrics, a wall of alarms, and a mountain of monitoring configuration. In reaction to this, and in an attempt to solve the monitoring problem, some new approaches emerged, and I myself noticed these trends in monitoring solutions provided by mainstream and emerging vendors. Firstly, self-service configuration. Uh, as a reaction to help administrators cope with the burden of the mountain of monitoring configuration required for configuration-heavy monitoring solutions, many vendors bolted on self-service portals to their monitoring solutions to facilitate the distribution of configuration effort to their internal customers. Another uh, class of application, monitoring application, uh, I saw was complex event processing. So to reduce the overhead of noisy alarm sources and to try and elicit real issues from the flood of alarms entering the ops room, complex event processing seeks to separate the wheat from the chaff. Using a combination of analytics and considering contextual information that even includes analysing IRC channel traffic. Another approach to solving the monitoring problem was analytics. And this approach typically examines time series data streams um, of performance data uh, from sources in an attempt to, for example, identify departures from known seasonal behaviours or breakdowns in causal relationships. So, for example, identifying automatically that when the number of logged in users to a service goes up, memory consumption normally goes up too. But if server memory consumption goes up without an increase of logged in users, then we may have a problem. Log management uh, was another approach taken by vendors. Logs tell the whole story about what any application or service is doing. And log management tools have become essential in the operation management toolkit. Being able to compose logs from distinct but related sources is hugely beneficial. And finally, I noticed uh, uh, an APM and NPM convergence. So the application performance monitoring and network performance monitoring vendors are progressively incorporating one another's features in their own offerings. That means APM tools are beginning to offer network management features by inferring network behavior, behavior from latencies at monitored endpoints. And NPM solutions are using packet analysis techniques to identify the presence and behavior of particular applications. Uh, unfortunately, while self-service does indeed reduce the config overhead, it really doesn't help with the other issues. Complex event processing is promising, but there's still a configuration overhead, which is, if anything, worse than before. Um, analytics and log management look promising, uh, although they struggle with the lack of contextual information uh, about the infrastructure. Analytics tends to work well for a certain class of problems, like detecting non-seasonal behavior, Log management relies on the meaningfulness of log data emitted and that logs are emitted. For example, not all network devices can stream logs. Um, APM, NPM convergence is a war of attrition that I think the application performance monitoring guys will eventually win. Um, in particular, the level of contextual information provided by APM solutions is particularly interesting as it alludes to what I believe is the holy grail of monitoring and that's root cause. So, root cause is the thing that caused the problem in the first place. Uh, it could be an interface that went down on a network. Um, it could be the loss of some low balancing web servers. Uh, the effect would be perhaps sluggish behavior of a web application or a particular group of users' sessions timing out. Whatever it is, operations teams need to find the root cause of an issue before the user picks up the phone to report the issue. Often monitoring solutions will report every symptom of a problem and maybe buried in there the original cause too. 
one of the biggest problem, uh, one of the biggest challenges in, in IT operations management today is distinguishing symptom from cause. There are some solutions that claim to provide this, but in general, all that's really happening is uh, systems are searching for the earliest event in a bunch of tenuously related events. Establishing root cause is really difficult, and the reason it is so difficult is because solutions don't model all of the relationships between all of the artefacts in the infrastructure. Some are captured, many are inferred, but a concrete model of all the relationships out there is often lacking. But having an up-to-date model of the infrastructure makes root cause analysis, real root cause analysis, possible. With the topological model composed of entities representing artefacts in the infrastructure and the relationships between them, one can traverse the model and look for the entities that are related to uh, an entity that is exhibit exhibiting a uh, symptom. Well, now there's another challenge around the corner. In the last 12 to 18 months, we've seen a huge amount of momentum behind the microservice architectural pattern and the containerized deployment of those services. The microservice architectural style has gained momentum in part due to a range of emergent technologies, technologies like Docker and Kubernetes, and the maturing of certain practices like Agile and DevOps. Uh, this approach puts developers and operations staff at the center and underpins an organization's ability to perform continuous delivery of applications and services making for better quality, more robust, and more scalable solutions. Uh, the ability to establish root cause is as important as ever, and in addition, containerized deployments bring a whole new set of challenges. Not least the fact that highly complex and distributed systems like these can exhibit emergent behavior. So what I expect to see more of is a new breed of monitoring solutions that can help developers and operators alike assure the smooth operation of their containerized deployments and enable them to quickly identify the root cause of issues.